of you in this room, the ability to create things with my words has been the single greatest gift of my life. And in the moments when everything in my life was breaking down, whether it was my relationships or my job or my family, the ability to sit down and create something has saved me again and again and again. And so it is with, with incredible sincerity that I say that it is, a, it is a profound privilege to be able to perform with you tonight, to be able to perform with Kayla. So I wanted to thank you all for coming. And with that, we are going to just perform one piece, and it is no coincidence that it is called The Significance of Words. Words are important, or so I thought. The more I explored, the more I realized that perhaps I was the only person who felt that way. I wanted to make a life with words. I had important things to say, so I wrote books and blog posts and things that people never read. Too many words that say reading is so passe, who has the time? So I wrote speeches and gave them for free for the love of the art, and I learned really quickly that I couldn't pay my rent and words alone unless, of course, those words were, here's your check. So I got a job teaching people how to communicate, and sometimes they listened to me, and sometimes they didn't. And when I got tired of this job, I started searching for new jobs, and there were not a lot of actual paying jobs for people who love words. You'd think there would be, but there aren't, and I began to curse my gifts. Right when I have a useful skill, like programming. <laughs> Everyone needs programmers. You go on any job site ever, indeed, or simply hired. They all want programmers. Programming is important. <laughs> but words, they're insignificant because if they weren't, we wouldn't be so reckless with them. If words really mattered, we wouldn't write nasty things on the internet. And we would say thank you more. And if words truly mattered, we would never say anything unkind because we would understand how damaging words can be. I know how damaging words can be. Because it took me a long time to undo the damage of someone else's words. She's 11, and that girl is me, but it hurts too much to say I am not as brave as you. And although I didn't know it, it was the day that words became significant. You're ugly, the boy in her class said, and though she tried to forget it, it got stuck in her head on that day so many years ago. He planted a hurt seed that continued to grow. He was cool, handsome, athletic, you know the type, right? Like grows up, works in finance. Swoops his hair, looks good doing it. But that girl, she ate alone. It was social suicide that was lunch with someone deemed a popular lunch in the library, surrounded by books, other people's words, not that boy's words. Fiction and fantasy filled for her brain to keep her 11 year old self from going insane, protected from the mean things that people said. You smell, you're fat. Disgusting people shouldn't bother brushing their hair, and on and on, because sixth graders can be terribly creative with their insults. And that girl was funny, and that girl was smart, and that girl was dedicated to her art. But when that girl was young, she subconsciously agreed that she didn't deserve to feel beautiful, and that belief played out in so many ways, like this. She's 18. A boy loves her. He says she's beautiful for the first time ever. She doesn't believe it, she's 19. He says it again and she thinks, maybe. She's 20 and that boy is gone and she is too sad to care if anyone thinks she is beautiful or not. She's alone with her single friends, five attractive girls out of the bachelorette party with four men approach, four men to five girls. Math is not my strong suit, but even I know that's uneven. That girl gets up to go to the bathroom to even things out. I'm sure they don't want to talk to me, she thinks. It was just a seed that grew into a plant, tried to ignore it, she can. His words to root around her heart and started to kill the positive parts, and she knew she had to do something to change, or she'd spend her whole life stuck in that place, and she didn't want to be there. She had too much talent and grace, so the roots she had to replace. So she wedges her nimble fingers beneath those twisted roots and pools that awful plant right out of her big, wonderful heart. And she examines the plant made out of your ugly and weird, watered by insecurity and fear, and crushes it between her fingers. Poof. It's gone. 
uh, while I order that easy. But it's a start. She's 21, she spends her birthday drunkenly doing ballet at the bar, and she has never taken ballet, but she's fueled by whiskey and rum. And she pirouettes to her own group of friends, and she is not thinking about words at all, but other people are. When Barack Obama came along and said, yes, we can, the entire nation realized the significance of words. And there are other leaders, too, who use their words. Martin Luther King, he had a dream, and Gandhi wanted you to be the change. When Hitler said, by the skillful and sustained use of propaganda words, London, Iceland. Iceland. Kimian's going to Iceland. Christina's got her bang game on point. Oh. You know what I mean. And she's, well, single and unintentionally celibate. <laughs> <laughs> and has a bunk bed. Yeah, living my best life. Correlation to the celibacy, probably. She's 26. It's election time again, but this time Obama does not have time for inspiring pros. He's busy doing shit. That's how it goes. But it's 27 when she's at her lowest low. Not because of words, but because of money and love and other things that make people low. She buys a programming book. <laughs> and realizes she simply doesn't have a knack. So instead, she starts to use her words to create things and books and speeches and things that are funny and things that are sad and things that move people and things that people love or don't and things that people read or don't and listen to or don't because eight minutes on YouTube is just a little too long. But it no longer matters. She's not creating for them. She's creating because the words live inside and they need to come out. And in so many ways, that is what saves her. That is what saves her. That is what saves her again and again and again. The ability to create things with words saves her because words matter to her, to you, to them. She's 29. It's time to conclude our journey, and she needed to rewrite her story. And although it's not violent nor gory, it's about hearts planted long ago, and a careless boy said she was ugly. So is the story different, or is it still the same? She's still driven and stalled by her shame. You're beautiful, he says. She believes it. I love you, he says. She believes it. And so to conclude, I have one plea. 
before you use words that begin with N or F or C, before you comment on an article, before you say she's nasty or clueless or dumb, before you tell him he's a loser or worthless or no fun, before you offer your feedback, consider that you might do more harm than good. Because you have the power with your words to make things different, to create art or healthy relationships or positive self-esteem. You can do that with your words. And you can destroy confidence or friendships or create negative self-esteem. You can do that with your words. You, 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 you have that power because words are powerful. You have the power to make words significant. Thank you. Woo!